All right, so day two, got the condenser installed. Got a new condenser on it. We're running the pressure test again. This is why I really like that nitrogen. So it's been 16 minutes and we've basically lost, I mean, 0.1, but that's so much better than yesterday. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer and see and put, put some more stuff back on here. But she's looking good. Next step, we'll get the vacuum started. All right, well, it's looking great. Nitrogen test is working like a champ. It's saying 0.4. That's just because the temperature out here changed a little bit. But as you can see, we started at 211.7. It's 211.7. It's been 32 minutes. She's, she's good to go. So we're going to go ahead and get the vacuum hooked up. All right, so let's get the vacuum going. We're bleeding all the nitrogen out. This is my pump. And my little box of goodies. This is a micron gauge, a Levi. Mentioned it yesterday. See on high pressure, but that's going to start to uh, to tell us how the vacuum is doing. These are little valves so we can shut the system off and not lose our vacuum. So I'm hooking that up here. And just for fun, we can throw my other, I can throw my other micron gauge on it if you guys want to. Oh no. do it for you guys that can go right here you can get all this stuff I guarantee you could get all this stuff for I mean less than 1500 bucks you could have everything you need most likely unless you bought the nicest of everything It does tend to connect it. Get all over the place. Check all our connections. Plug the pump in. Let it rip.
obviously this gauge is on the complete other side of the system we're not even pulling from that one so it's gonna lag a little Yeah, that's the setup. Oh, you guys wanted to see my box? Yeah. Check it out. Harbor Freight. Socket trays. Got these, uh, these are those socket rails. All American. I don't do much metric. I have more metric stuff at home. Got the little dividers I saw in your guys' videos. Love those. This is, I love this drawer. Yeah, there she goes. See that? Now we're starting to do something. So we're going to let this run for a while. This is way more accurate than, than just looking at a gauge that's showing, you know, minus 28, 29 inches of mercury. Because if we had that gauge, if we had it hooked up here, it would already show us. My, you know pretty much a full vacuum and when you're pressure testing I know a lot of car guys pressure test under a vacuum but it's really not a good way to pressure test because you're only you only have 14.7 PSIA which is atmosphere pushing against your leak so you're not going to really see it rise like you might um, so we're going to use digital gauges when we charge the unit up this is your saturation temperature that we went over in the other video so this one's just digital and this has um, you know all sorts of freons programmed into it so you just tell it it's 134a and when the system starts to run we're going to see what our high side temperature is and what our low side temperature is we're also going to go ahead and throw these superheat and subcooling clamps on the lines the uh, low side clamp goes on the suction line the high side clamp is going to go on the liquid line and we'll just kind of see what those numbers end up to be obviously we're going to put in the correct charge and you do i also yeah i forgot one thing in the tool video you are going to need a scale and you know a lot of this stuff you guys can find in the hvac trade tools so this is my scale it's wireless So we're just going to turn it on. And then we'll set the Freon tank on there and we'll be able to dial it in. So you, you know you zero it out. We'll put the tank on there, zero it out, and then we'll feed exactly one pound, 12 ounces in there. Maybe what I'll do is I will um, eighteen fourteen thirteen ninety. So can we get these? I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe what I'll do is I will start the truck up with the with it about a pound low let's put we'll put a pound in and then we'll start the truck up and we'll see what the pressures look like low and then we'll finish charging it up all right so here's the thing is we're kind of stalling out a little bit it's not really going fast enough so what we can do is we're going to shut the vacuum off 
turn the pump off and you guys can see that my vacuum is holding pretty nicely there these numbers I mean if there was any leak these numbers would start climbing pretty quick and that one's actually still dropping so to get this number a little lower and again I don't know how much lower we can get it because I'm not sure how well automotive systems are leak tight but we can use nitrogen to uh, we can use nitrogen to break the system vacuum we can use nitrogen to break the vacuum okay so we got a little bit of nitrogen on the system so we're going to loosen that one so we put it in on the high side and we're bleeding it off the low side And what we can do is we can just kind of let it run like that for a second. And that'll kind of help move any of the moisture around and get it out. So just a little tip if any of you guys decide to start using nitrogen, I highly recommend it from doing leak tests to purging, uh, blowing out a system to breaking your vacuum if it's not pulling down good. This might probably obviously a little bit overkill for an automobile but all right well it's taking too long it's taking too long so best thing to do is not sit around staring at it I'm gonna go ahead and and reset up here I've got nitrogen running through it right now we're going to oh, come on should have unplugged it I'm putting a second hose on it. So that's what I'm doing. This hose is not very flexible. like how oh, she's going to be Now we're pulling from both ports. Thought one was enough, but guess it wasn't.
Oh yeah, much better. Much better. See, one thing I've learned over the years is it's better to stop and purge some with nitro or, you know, I thought it was going to be enough on this small system to just have the one hose set up, but looks like it's just wasn't getting a, you know, we could have sat here for hours and, and seen it pull down, but, you know, literally I've been doing this for about 20 minutes and we're already down to a, an acceptable level. Really anything under a thousand is acceptable. We're going to see if we can get it to 600, 500, something like that. All right guys, so let me show you where we're at. We're pulling down nicely when the system uh, is pulling, but let me show you guys how to actually use one of these micron gauges. Right now, the pump is, is pulling on these hoses and the gauges, so they're reading nice and low. But watch what happens when I valve it off. It shoots up, shoots up. So what you got to do is you got to close them and see where the rise goes to. Um, you know, I've been pulling on this thing for a while. We've purged it a bunch. I don't know if I'm really going to get a good solid reading like I would on a, uh, a regular heating and air unit. Because my question is, is how tight is this crankshaft seal? How tight are these hoses and whatnot? Um, so I feel pretty good about this system, but I just... You can't just have a micron gauge hooked to your pump and assume that that all is well because as soon as I open these back up the uh, the reading drops again rather quickly so you know from a moisture standpoint I think we're we're light years ahead I also my concern is I don't know how vacuum rated these are they're probably not vacuum rated so our leak might be just right in here trying to keep my hose from pulling on it but um, so our next step we're going to go ahead and get my uh, my hose hooked up to the gate just get the drum flipped upside down get it zeroed out and we'll start to charge it all right guys well, it's time for the moment of truth we've got Got the high side and the low side hooked up. I went ahead and took off my little ball valves. And we've got my uh, superheat and subcool clamps on there. Now I just thought I'd go over this with you guys because, oh, I better plug in the uh, inlet air temperature. Okay. <laughs> anyway, make sure your wires are clear from any spinning belts or fans. Okay. And make sure they're getting touching the pipe good. That's our suction probe. This is our liquid line. Now we're going to start off when you guys see EV and CO, those are our pressure temps. And then we'll go down to see superheat and subcool. Those are the actual temperatures of the actual lines. So you can see right now it's about, uh, about 88 degrees in the shop right now. So just keep that in mind and we're going to start the unit up. I've got one pound in it. And we're going to start out, it's going to be running a little low on charge. Um, another thing to note is we won't see this compressor cycling because I mentioned in the other video, this is a unloading type compressor. So, this is the actual unloader valve here. It's held in with a little circlip. Um, basically this valve opens and it allows discharge gas to go back in the suction and it kind of bypasses itself to reduce capacity. I don't know if you guys can see anything in there, but just wanted to note that you will not see, you will not see this sky cycling, but all right, without further ado. We're 
gonna start with the fan on three. Max AC, always wanna put it to max. condensing at 100 degrees right now which is about 10 degrees over ambient but our subcooling is low if you have low subcool you're low on charge if we were running low pressures but we had like 20 degrees of subcool you got a restriction Superheat is high. We got high superheat. Which means basically just grab this line. It's not very cold. And our compressor is going to start to get really hot too because it's bypassing in itself right now because it thinks that we have a low load when it's really just low on charge. Subcool is dropping down to like nothing. All right, let's go ahead and put the other 12 ounces in and see how she does. We're gonna now put it in the low side because the system's running. We won't be able to get anything in the high side. The pressure's higher than the tank. We're gonna start feeding it in the low side and we're gonna go relatively slow. So we're just gonna crack this knob. Subcool is climbing. Alright, so I got it, we got a... So look, our high side pressure, it's, it's pretty high right now. And obviously, with a car compressor, it's belt driven. So the, the more RPMs, the more she's pumping. Hopefully the fan will engage pretty soon. That pressure's pretty high right now. See, we're at condensing at 150. Our liquid line is hot. Our 
super heat's come down some, but... Well, it's kind of hard to, to charge a car. starting to kick in a little bit now see our pressure dropping yeah our fans starting to kick in now Temperature feels good, but we're still a little bit low. We're still a little bit low on charge according to the weight. So. A little bit of air from the fans starting to so even though it's really hot the condensing temperature is really hot our liquid line is really hot so that tells us it's not really a restriction problem it's a heat transfer problem we're not really obviously the truck's not going down the road and is having a hard time um, it's having a hard time and of course we got the windows wide open it's 
really humid here too and humidity will have a big impact on how cold the air is coming out of the vent so let's go ahead and close this truck up let the cabin start to drop temp a little bit that's also going to make our, uh, our head pressure drop And that means this line's getting cold. You can see it's sweating. So now that the cab is starting to cool down, our head pressure is dropping as well. Operator 36. There, she's starting to drop now. The compressor just unloaded. Y'all see that? The compressor just unloaded. Tell you what, just for fun, we'll, we'll open the door again and we'll watch the compressor. We'll watch the compressor uh, go back, kick back up. back into full speed. Maybe not. Let's go ahead and put the last of the charge in. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this over. We're just gonna expel the liquid out of the lines and then she'll be charged about right
I need another Alice, but she's close. This fan's actually even air blowing on the tank can mess it up. We have no sub cool, but then again, the truck is getting pretty hot in this garage here, and and uh, we know she's charged right, and we know it doesn't have a restriction. Our superheat looks good because again, the compressor is cooled by the Freon. I can hold my hand here, but I cannot hold my hand here, so it is getting some good cold gas coming back to it. cold air coming out of the vents here and we'll go and put it up to full blast so we're shutting it off and we're going to restart it and let's see if the compressor should load back up and we should see the high side go really high like it was and then probably it's going to unload again and then what's going to happen is the compressor should unload again and we'll see the head pressure drop significantly so let's uh let's try it out again here Cool though. Z 
zero superheat means you're flooding liquid. I think she just unloaded again. So she unloaded, so there you guys kind of saw the range of uh, So we got a chance to see the range of this compressor and how it uh, Loads and unloads and how the pressure spikes and drops and and the uh, how the compressor is cooled by the suction gas nice and cold coming back that's why a compressor will not live very long if the Freon is getting low all the time and the customer just runs it, runs it, runs it, it, it cooks itself. And that happens in all kinds of uh, systems. Most every compressor is cooled by the uh, suction gas. So um, that pretty much concludes our project. And I thank you guys for watching. And I just knocked some stuff over. And I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys learned something about AC. So I appreciate it. We'll catch you guys later. And if you have any questions or you want to see something else, put it down in the comments and uh, I'll check it out. So that's about it though. And about the toolbox, if you want to see how I made the custom magnetic drawers, I got a, a prod, I got a video series in my channel about how I made these magnetic stay shut. And they're really doing a great job. They don't open up when I'm driving because, of course, that's a big problem with the toolbox in a van like this. So go back to my channel and check it out. I think it's called Viper Toolbox. Uh, series so